the original uh, Clash of the Titans was regarded as something of a sort of campy cult classic. Uh, what Your words, not mine, brother. <laughs> okay, it was regarded by me okay. as a, a cult classic. Uh, what made you want to get involved in the remake? Um, it, man, it's very high risk to even get onto a, like a, a franchise like Terminator or a, or a remake of this kind of thing because it's a, you know you're stepping on you're stepping on you know, people's kind of fond memories. Um, by getting on, by Louis showing me his designs for this and telling me where he wanted to take it and how much he wanted to ramp it up, I thought, well, we could be in safe hands and it could give some to the next generation so they've got their own Clash of the Titans to, be, to have fond memories of. Mm -hmm. uh, is it me or were those gladiator skirts really short? Um, I tried to make mine shorter. I thought I'd got to bring in the girls somehow. Yeah. But every time I made it shorter, the boys would go, we can see your Christmas hams, man, so we better come pull it down a bit. You know? uh, Christmas hams, is that like an infection? <laughs> I've got some of them. I do that much. <laughs> but uh, no, we got gravel wraps. That's what we did get. No, no, no. You know, the junk in the trunk, or whatever you guys call it. I think junk in the trunk refers to the uh, backside. Yeah, it's the same as Christmas hands, man. What do you oh, think okay, that? okay. Would you want to do another Avatar movie if uh, James Cameron didn't direct it? Um, no. Yeah, it could take another twelve years then. Well, you know, Jim is only going to dive in if he's got something to challenge him. Yeah. Um, you know, we know where the story's going to go, so you know, so we just have to wait and see, and hopefully, you know, when Jim's ready to go, I'll jump. Did they ever explain why the armor, the armor has abs? Um, because I couldn't be bothered working out my abs, so uh, we kind of did it that way. And then I think it's also very futuristic. Um, has a different kind of look to it because they're kind of solid. Those abs are kind of squarer. And I know that was the, the design that Louis wanted to go for. So you suddenly realise that this is a modern take. Cool. Um, Louis talked a little bit about how he has sort of franchise franchise aspirations for this. Has he talked to you about where he'd like to go? Yeah, he has. He's, he's, you know, we've, well, we both discussed it because I said, you know, there's a lot of other mythological creatures we could take it to. The, the main theme of the movie is about family. It's about a man trying to connect with his dad. And that's still not resolved you know, by the end of our movie. And I thought that you know, there's places to explore. And this movie is also about revenge, which means the second movie should be about redemption and forgiveness. And, uh, you know, and th those kind of massive themes are things that I like to, to take, and, if you, and I like this world. So if you kind of do that, you know, I, I wouldn't mind going back to it and doing another one. Yeah. What is this Dan Dare movie I keep hearing you talk well, about? Dan, Dan Dare's a, a British kind of, it's described as, I read on a, on a blog, I think it might have been on your website, as a British, uh, British Buck Rogers. Um, and so we kind of, you know, it's something that I was talking to the boys about. You know? Yeah. It's another story that I thought would be kind of interesting. Because you pretty much can't pick up the litter right now. Well, I don't know about that, man. There's, there's a lot of boys. In, you know, Jerry Butler's downstairs. He does a hell of a lot of movies as oh, well. You can kick his ass. I don't know about that, man. He's a big boy. He Le does only he's Leonidas, man. <laughs> he does only rom-coms now. <laughs> I think they're fighting words. Yeah. Don't tell him, please. <laughs>